Right, so uh, so far we talked about the uh, precipitation data and uh, we saw that how we can use uh, point measurements to uh, create aerial rainfall measurements. Uh, but uh, at the beginning of the uh, previous lecture, I talked about potential errors in some uh, data measurements. It could be human-made errors, it, it could be uh, instrumental error, and so many other things. And also, uh, we saw that there are uh, several rain gauges at each catchment, and it could be some uh, events in the catchment that we cannot recognize potential error in the measurements. For example, you know, when you install a measure in a catchment, in a rain gauge in a catchment, and uh, leave it in a uh, in good location far from uh, trees and some other buildings, but by time there are uh, some uh, infrastructures or growth of trees nearby your station, meteorology station, and they may they may uh, affect the uh, measurements, or uh, you can uh, relocate the location of uh, rain gauges as uh, by the time, for example, uh, ten years ago you installed the. Uh, rain gauge in uh, near your uh, home, for example, but after five years, uh, the uh, owner of that location came and built another uh, building there, and you have to relocate the gauge and you uh, install the same gauges uh, half kilometer away from the first location and something happened. Therefore, it is possible uh, some inconsistencies um, can uh, be seen in the data. Uh, therefore, we should uh, always uh, think about the uh, correctness of the measurements. And uh, to uh, adjust or uh, correct some uh, problems that I mentioned in the, uh, our gauges. Uh, there are several methods. One of them is double mass curve. That is the most uh, uh, or the uh, the frequently used method. Have uh, some problems in some gauges. Uh, how did this work? Uh, double mass curve. In double mass curve. Uh, what do I show? In double mass curve, actually, we uh, uh, draw the cumulative values of uh, measurements in our gauge uh, in comparison to the cumulative average of uh, rainfall at surrounding gauges to check if this gauge is consistent with the other gauges or not. Here is, this is the example of your uh, book, your textbook, and I'm going to solve it to show how the double mass curve works. In this example, we have, uh, for example, 21 gauges in a catchment. One of them is called gauge X, and the other, the remainings are called, for example, gauge one, two, three, blah, blah, up to 20 gauges. And we have measurements for, uh, since 1967 at all these gauges up to 2002. And uh, the hydrologists thinks that it is possible to have some problem in gauge number X, and he is interested to uh, check if there is such a problem, or and if the answer is yes, to adjust the uh, measurements. 
the double mass curve was used to solve to this problem. And the steps of solution is shown here. Again, I, you see that I uh, showed here the years starting since 1967 up to 2002. And I wrote the value of uh, precipitation measurements in millimeter at gauge X. And also I wrote the average of other 20 gauges at this year. These are annual amounts, okay? Total annual rainfall at this gauge measurements. Now, what I should do, I should calculate or create two columns in my Excel sheet to calculate cumulative value of precipitation at age and those correspond to the average of 20 gauges. This is cumulative value for this column shows cumulative precipitation for X. Uh, the first value directly comes here because we don't have measurements before than 65. But the second value in cumulative means that we add this value with the add the value of the next year. For example, 414 plus 302 gives you this value. For the next year, you should add 716 to 308. It gives you this value. And continue in that way for the entire year. For example, we can say that cumulative value of precipitation at rain gauge X at, uh, on, uh, in, the, in 2002 equals to 9,833 plus 264. It gives you this value. The same process is done for uh, the average of those 20 gauges as shown here. Now I have two column of cumulative uh, precipitation. And what I should do, I should uh, draw the uh, plot of these two columns in a way that X axis, X axis shows cumulative axis of the uh, 20 gauge averages and y axis shows cumulative this value cumulative precipitation of my gauge the gauge of interest and then i should check how these uh, uh, how is the pattern of this data you see uh, i have two different patterns look from here to this red point, each point shows one value of one year, yeah? The first point, the, the, the lowest point should be this one, yeah? Because the, value are, the values are cumulative and they increase by year. Therefore, the first value shows this raw, the second circle shows second raw, and so on. So you see that when I arrive to this red point, suddenly a change, a sudden change uh, appears at, uh, in the angle of a line, a linear line, if I draw on this data. Look, this, the angle is like something shown here. But after this point, look, uh, sorry. Um, let me show you with the purple line. But after this point, the linear line is like this. Hmm? It's like this, and there are different angles. So something happened based on these measurements or based on this uh, graph, I can say that something happened on the uh, on this data after the year after the year that I measured this point. 
So I should come back to the to find which year is this. And in Excel, you can easily see the value of this point. And from its value, you can, the value is something about 5,000, yeah? 5,000 at X and 4,000 blah, blah at Y. This is my uh, Y column and 4,000 blah. It, it is this value. And the corresponding year is 1981. Therefore, this graph said that Something happened to the station when the uh, trend of data, trend line of data before 98 was something like this line. After 1981, something happened and data has another line, trend line. So it could be, for example, as a result of relocation as a result of growth of trees, as a result of some other uh, happens, events that happened on the catchment. So I should adjust and I, I, I can say that the measurements after 1981 are inconsistent with the measurements of before 1981 and I cannot use entire data in this form. I should adjust the data or I, sh I must correct the data measurements after 1981. To correct the measurements, my aim is that to remove the change in this, the angle of the, the angle of, uh, uh, angle of the uh, line that I can draw on these data. To do this, what I should the double mass curve says that first find five the find the average of cumulative values of x and cumulative value of the average of the other stations for the years beef, uh, up to here up to this point up to 1981 this is the average in fact 33 uh, 330 is the average of this column up to here, and 290 is average of this column up to here. So after that, I can find the average of the remaining years. 241 is the average for uh, this column, and 287, 5 is the average for this column. So after finding these averages, you can find to uh, the ratio of gauge X to other gauges. The ratio, the ratio of before ratio one uh, before before the 1981. The other ratio for after 1981. To this end, what I should do, I should divide this value by this value, it gives me 1.13. For the remaining years, the ratio is, can be defined by this value, uh, by dividing 241 over 285, which gives me this value. Now I have the two ratios, one for the before 81, the other for the after 81. And if I divide the ratio of before 81 to the after 81, I can find the correction ratio. It is called correction ratio shown here, 1.35. And by if I multiply any measurements of my gauge, this column, yeah, after 1981 to this correction ratio, I can increase the value of these measurements so that they move to the red line like this you see now i have the red line that covers entire data these are this these are the same data of x but after 81 this columns is the corrected value of gauge x corrected value of 282 but so i can say that 380 equals 282 times correction value, 1.35.
The task is done for all the years after 1981. And again, if you draw this column, draw this column, uh, sorry, now this is your uh, measurements. If you generate a new cumulative values up to here, up to here is the same with this one, yeah? But after 1981, you should add this value to the corrected measurements, it gives you this value. Then add this value to the corrected, it gives this value. And now if you uh, assume this is your y-axis instead of this value, you will see such a graph, you will have such a graph showing that all the data have the same trend. And it shows that I corrected my, uh, I corrected my uh measurements if in the beginning if in the beginning when you draw this uh graph you see such a graph and when you add a thread line and when you if you see that all the points are located on this linear line therefore there is no inconsistency there is no need to double mass curve to correct so uh in this example, we check if there is some problems in gauge X among those 21 gauges. This method can be uh, done for all other gauges. For example, uh, in Ankara station, uh, you can uh, check the, if there is inconsistency between the Polatli stations and the, the remaining five gauges. If you see that in the data, there are uh, it can be done as a homework because you have the uh, annual data of Ankara also in this. Uh, this is a what monthly and this is yeah this is annual. If you add only this is for one station, yeah. If you find for data for, for six so those six stations annual data, you can do the double mass care, check if there is consistency or inconsistency between the one station and the others. That's all for uh, today and this uh, is the end of chapter two in your textbook. In the next uh, chapter, we will talk about evaporation and um, another factor in uh, hydrological cycle. Okay, any question? Teacher, can you please tell us when is the midterm exam? For the midterm exam, I uh, I think it could it would be at the third of. Let me check just my calendar. You can also maybe see it. Yeah, and the, on the third, because on tens is the uh, is a holiday, and on the third of the November, it would be on the third of November. But the exact time will be announced by via the department. I already gave the information to the department. Thank you. Thank you, teacher. Thank you so much. Okay, you're welcome. Any other question?